39,000 items sounds a lot, but it can fit in quite a small room. Collectors, the terminology that we probably most often are used by, but I like to see myself as a caretaker. So I'm caretaking history, so I can pass it on. I've worked with Queensland Museum. Um, they did a stock take back in 2012, and at that stage I had over 39,000 items. From each item I have, there is a life that you can get out of it, and with National Archives and the Australian War Memorial, you can now start to put a face to each item. And the smallest item can be a button, and the largest item being a vehicle. 39,000 items sounds a lot, but it can fit in quite a small room. Now, what I have here is a Deutsch Jungen Vogel, early Hitler Youth. So the basic history, as I can work out, at the end of the Second World War, he had no interest in Europe. He came out to Australia and retired to Grass Tree Beach, so technically a local. But when his mother died in the 80s, um, the family sent over to him a suitcase which had all his stuff from the Second World War. Um, he had no real interest and wanted to get rid of it, and I just happened that a friend was in the area, asked him to hold it until I could get there, and I raced down there and purchased the item. Okay, so what we have here on display, we have his swimming certificate, his promotion certificate for his promotions, his shooting certificate, and sports award. So, as young soldiers, they still did um, things that you would consider with education, swimming and sports. It's a uniform for a 12 year old. It's not a soldier, it's a child. And this young man, um, one of his jobs was to cart anti-aircraft ammunition and carry messages between anti-aircraft guns. When I do display them at a school, it's not to show the might of the Germans at the time, it's to show that war affects children. A spoon and a fork, what's missing? A knife. Now, unlike today... He actually takes his collection to a number of Mackay schools, both primary and, and high school. The kids do love it. I, I think uh, it's real. I mean, they can see real shrapnel. Phil is dressed as a real soldier. Um, he has recreated a trench. Um, so I think it's very much real to them. I liked it because I learned about how the uniforms I was feeling very happy that I could see all sorts of Anzac pictures and all sorts of Anzac displays. Um, I like that we got to go into the trenches. Working with school students, and I like to think that we can build up a bit of a history and certainly get them to ask the questions of their parents, grandparents, and try to keep some living history going. I was a cadet. So I, I had an interest in the military right from a young age. Um, but when I moved into this house 28 years ago, I had one uh, bookcase with my collection in it. And it has since grown just a little. <laughs> I've built it, um, two dedicated rooms now to store my collection. And from there, it just um, it keeps growing. Being a cadet instructor for the last 25 years with the Air Force cadets, um, a lot of my cadets have since gone on to the military. When they leave the services and all of that, they quite often offer some of their gear. I've had the dump ring me say that someone dropped a suitcase of uniforms off. I've had um, stuff that have been dropped off from the op shops um, because they don't like to sell old military equipment. So it's become a bit of a network. We have an air-conditioned room, even down to vacuuming the uniforms. So it's an ongoing thing. Um, sometimes you sit there and you go, oh, I don't really want to do it, but you know, you're know, you in charge of looking after it. And I'd hate to think that something in my watch or we lose. It's only a slight reflection of the men and women who use these uniforms, use these items. If I can remember just a little bit of what they went through and passed that on. It's not that they disappear into our dusty old history books or they become just a photo on the shelf. They're still people.